flying high, flashing wings across the sky. Jordy Racer, Jordy Racer, on the road, in the street, hear the sound of pounding feet. Jordy Racer, Jordy Racer, fly. The story so far. Spuggy has told his dad all about Baz. He picked it up for Baz. And you thought I knew? I I drove Baz's truck, but I'm a crook, man. So Dad decided to tackle Baz. Seems I'm mixed up with a lot of crooks. I mixed up, right, man? We're gonna help ourselves to the tables at the recreation centre. Thanks to this funny little map, you drew for us. Best thing you can do is say no. What happened next? Something happened to Mam. She tripped over Plod and broke her leg. Meanwhile, Dad had gone to the police. Spuggy was worried. Why isn't Dad back yet? Do you think the police have locked them up? If they have, I'll be round to sort them out. They've knee right. Oh, now give over, the pair of you. You know he's done the right thing going to the police. We'll just have to... He's back! <laughs> What did the police say, Dad? They said, thanks. But why are they not locked up yet, Dad? Why, 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 why? Five days now since you tell the police, and Baz and Victor are still dotting about, free as... as birds. Oh. Look, man, if I've told you this once, I've told you a thousand times. The police want to catch them red-handed, but I don't know what day the raid's planned for, so they're keeping an eye on the recreation centre. But why can't but they just... But the police cannot watch it forever. They've got too much else to do, right? Come in for the last run, Dad. Hi, maybe I will. It's the big day tomorrow. Tomorrow was the day of the Great North Run. A big day at last. It was Mum I felt sorry for. A broken leg and in plaster. A leg in plaster? Huh. It was all the fault of that lazy bones plod. <laughs> Poor old plod. You really don't like him, do you? No, I don't. You missed his song, you know. I think you'll love it. Especially the end. Ah, we'll see about that. <laughs> In my usual way, I went out to play and took up my place in the race. Oh, I needed a prod, cause I went at a plod and I turned rather red in the face. I wanted to please as I plunged through the trees But a van came and ruined my plan <laughs> This was a disaster, my legs were in plaster What a race, what a plot, what a man! Oh, so Plod ended up with his legs in plaster too! <laughs> Serve him right! Plod by name and Plod by nature! Well, I suppose he is a bit on the slow side. Plod slow? I should think so. No, blue flash is just the opposite. What's the opposite of slow? Yes, he's fast. And he's a flyer. So blue flash isn't an ordinary pigeon. He's just the opposite. He's special. What makes Blue Flash so special? Yes, he's been trained to race. That's why Baz wants to keep him. Can you train a dog to race? Well, perhaps not all dogs. 
special dogs. Can you train a horse to race? Well, perhaps not all horses. Special horses. At first, Spuggy and Janey thought Light of St. Mary was a racehorse. But then they realized it was... St. Mary's Lighthouse. St. Mary's Lighthouse? Mickey, we've only heard that record once. Oh, you mean this one? Oh, yes. The one about the light that was bright at night. Right, word watchers. You keep a good lookout for all the words ending in I-G-H-T. Anchors away, Mickey. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, heave home, me old hearty. <laughs> On the island stood St. Mary's lighthouse On the water in the stormy night All the anxious flyers and the sailors Bless St. Mary's for its brilliant light In fog and wind and rain they felt a dreadful fright The sailors lost their sails The flyers lost their way And had to end their flight Always flashing from St. Mary's lighthouse Shone the signal steady, safe and bright And the flyers and the anxious sailors Tried to keep it always in their sight The storm was getting worse It beat with all its might But the flashes from St. Mary's lighthouse Signalled fear no more, this way is right Oh, it's finished! I'm glad everyone was all right. Don't take it all so seriously, Wordy. Everything in that song happened a long time ago. Ah, happened. Finished. Uh, have you noticed, Word Watchers? We often put ED at the end of words to show that something's finished, that it's happened. <laughs> Bill the Bricky's got a song about that. Yes. Do you remember he started to build words ending in ED into his word wall? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Why don't you build yourself a word? Build yourself a word with ED To say it's happened Take laugh, add ED Build yourself a word All together now Laughed, laughed Take look, add ED Build yourself a word All together now Looked, looked Take a yell, add ED, and build yourself a word. All together now. Yelled, yelled. Why don't you build yourself a word? Build yourself a word with ED. To say it's happened. What's happened? What's happened? Is it ever going to stop? Double the P, double the P. Now it's stopped. Away, word watchers! Oh, did you see that? Adding ED isn't always as simple as you think. With some words, you can't just add ED. You have to double up the last letter of the word as well. Look again. Stop. Stopped. Oh, so let's double up with ED. Watch this. Did Spuggy slam that door? Double the M. Double the M. Yes, it's slammed. Do Baz and Victor plan to raid the recreation centre? Double the N, double the N. Yes, they planned the crime together. The trouble was, the police didn't know what day the raid was planned for. And as Dad said, they wanted to catch Baz and Victor red-handed. Red-handed? You mean... Like this. <laughs> no, silly. It's just a turn of phrase. It means 
catch them actually committing the crime. So then they couldn't possibly say it wasn't them. That's right. Now when something serious like that happens, our newsroom get to hear about it almost at once. Actually, that reminds me, I haven't given them a ring this morning. Hello, newsroom. Fire at the quayside. Anybody hurt? Two men. They've been taken to hospital. Okay, I'll send the radio car straight down there. Excuse me, Chris. I've just been under the fire brigade. They tell me there's been a fire down at the quayside. Mm -hmm. Two men have been taken to hospital. I'd like you to take the radio car down there straight away and do a live feed into the next news. All right, okay. There, uh, Chris Jackson from Radio Newcastle. You're the officer Chris. in charge. Yes, I am. Yeah. Right. What's your name? Divisional Officer Ken Horn. Right. Do we know what the situation is on board at the moment? Hello, Radio Carter Base. I'm at the scene. Two seamen have been taken to hospital after a fire on board a ship tied up at the quayside in Newcastle. The men are thought to have been working in the engine room when the fire started. Chris Jackson's at the scene with the radio car. And he sends this report. And first on the scene was Divisional Officer Ken Horn of Tynan Weir. So you're running the fire story now? Mm hmm. And when will Chris be back with the radio car? Great. Thanks a lot. Bye. Oh, Mickey, your friends at the fire station seem to have had a busy morning. Yeah. And the newsroom's one of the busiest places at Radio Newcastle. They'll be covering the next Great North Run, of course, with a live commentary, and they'll be using the radio car for that too. Oh, dear. Just think it'll be me out there next time. Oh. Well, I think it's high time we got back to the story and found out how Dad and Kath got on. Now time for a check on the weather forecast as we go over to Newcastle Weather Centre. And here's the weather forecast for the big day. It will be fine, and early on there'll even be some sunshine. The light wind from the northwest shouldn't be too much of a problem, but later on it will become cloudy, and there may be some light showers near the coast. A bright start to another busy day. AM Northeast. <coughs> Right, now after that, first of all, best of luck to everybody who's taking part in this year's Great North Run. Hope the training's gone very well. For those of you who are not going to be able to make it down to the event, don't forget we've got live commentary of the Great North Run from start to finish. Our reporters are covering the whole route. That's from 10 o'clock this morning on Radio Newcastle. Now, are you sure you've had enough to eat, Pet? Aye, Mum. And you've got everything you need? Aye, Mum. Aye, it's an awful shame you're not running with us, Bev. Mm. Well, it's me own daft fault. I shouldn't have fallen over the dog. Aye. Are you coming to watch, then? Maybe later on. I've got to see to the pigeons first. Hey, good luck, Dad, right? Thanks, son. Hey, I'm going to need it. <laughs> so it's a pigeon's first. Hey, aye, so it should be. How are we now, you two? Oh, Get come going. On. You're oh, going to be late. The rest will be at Shields before you two have got started at this rate. Thanks, Ben. Good luck. Ta -da. And enjoy yourselves. Right, ta See you later. Bye. Uh -huh. Right then, just you and me, Plod. Morning, Mrs. Hilton. Oh, hello, Mickey. I uh, heard about your accident. Oh, come to interview the culprit, have you? Come in. Thanks. Thanks. 
So it's your fault, is it? Well, no, it's you I've come to interview, actually. I hope you don't mind. It's a real hard luck story. Why, no, not at all. Only I was just a way out. I kind of sit still here, you know. I was going to take the radio and listen to the run down the allotment. Well, I've got the car outside. I can give you both a lift. Me dad says the police says there's not enough fuel evidence yet. They're going to have to catch him red-handed, but... But they can't kind of watch the recreation centre forever. Aye. Uh, if only we knew when, Jeannie. They'll get caught, Spuggy. Crooks always do at the end. Yeah. Yeah, give us a hand. Look, I can't stay here now. I've got to take the shopping to me dad. The ship's sailing today. Aye, right. I'll see you later. Right. And don't worry. Tra. Tra. Hi, Spuggy. Hi. You must be the only two people in Newcastle who aren't going to the run. You should see the crowds. Police have got a hard day today. I've uh, just found out what was on your mind the other day. You did right to speak to your dad. Any news of Blue Flash? He's uh, trying not to think about that anymore. <laughs> As Janie was leaving her dead ship, she saw Baz and Victor. Baz was carrying a pigeon basket. I'm away. I'm still not happy about looking after pigeons. Oh, happy man. I'm only away for a few days. You'll manage. Uh, I'm looking after this one, though. This one's special. See you in an hour at the metro exit. Right. Have a good time at the sender. Uh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a Better lock the door. <laughs> Maybe this book is a good time. <laughs> Janie was locked in, and the raid was on.